First though this morning, waking up to the very sad news about comedian and TV star, and he was a star, Paul O'Grady, who died unexpectedly but peacefully last night at the age of 67. That's what his husband has told us all. Entertainment editor Lucy Cave joins me now. As we said, his husband announced the news. It was a real shock, Lucy. Such a shock. Um, really, I mean, the tributes have been pouring in, as you've said, and his husband announced the news that he's going to be greatly missed by his loved ones, his friends, his family, and, of course, his animals as well. Um, and he'd left uh, BBC Radio 2 recently after 14 years and was actually due to start a new show uh, on Boom Radio in just a couple of weeks' time, on Easter Sunday. You know, he'd been full of full of the spirit of life. He'd been on stage as Miss Hannigan in Annie recently, um, was in Edinburgh on stage four days ago and was due to go back on stage on the 24th of April. So it's come as a real shock. It's so sad because he, he, like you said, is such a legend, such an icon on TV. And the kindest man, the kindest, kindest man and the funniest man. And of course, going way back, um, we remember him as Lily Savage, of course, and absolutely groundbreaking and did such a lot of pioneering and campaigning as well. Yeah, Lily Savage was a true trailblazer. And actually, just before Lily Savage, he was Roxanne in the bill for that's three episodes. Right. And I think yes. that sort of paved the way for him as Lily Savage. But as you said, Lily Savage was a pioneer. I mean, he used Lily Savage, you know, as a platform to speak out about gay rights um, and was much loved. Actually, he based Lily Savage on some of his female relatives, I think. That was one of my favourite characters. Um, as Lily Savage, he was also on The Big Breakfast. And then he went on to host numerous massive primetime TV shows, including Blankety Blank and, of course, Blind Date as well. And he was so good at that. He really was good at that. I loved his tea time show, and I was lucky enough when he was off on holiday um, to sit in for him. And it was, like, it was like being on holiday yourself. It was an absolute joy. You know, there are just some shows where you, you just think, this is, this is fantastic, I'm loving this. But he set the tone, didn't he, Lucy? He was the one that made it fun for everybody. Yeah, I mean, everyone who's talked about him, everybody who's come across him just talks about this warmth, this wit, this just wonderful kind of aura that he had and that he spread everywhere he went. And, and you know, and as we've said before, it wasn't just people that he connected with, it was animals. I mean, he, he, leaves, behind a mass, he leaves behind him a massive sort of house full, farm full of animals, not just dogs, yeah. but obviously dogs were his kind of first true love. Um, and he was an ambassador for Battersea Cats and Dogs Home. And of course, his famous, um, his famous show, For the Love of Dogs, went on for several years. And actually, he was joined by Qu the Queen Consort um, a year ago uh, right. for a special episode of For the Love of Dogs. He was really close to her as well. And he talked about how fond he was of her. And, and he probably kind of shared that sort of that humour. He said that she kind of hugged him whenever she saw him. Mm. And I think he's, he's going to be so missed. Oh, he really is. And it's so interesting you're, you're saying that, Lucy. Do stay with us because the last time he was on the show, um, that would have been just before Christmas last year, I think in October, he actually talked about the fact that he did this show. He loved doing the show from Battersea, but there was only one thing. He just couldn't stop adopting wee dogs. Have a listen. There was a thing in your contract that said, You've not to adopt any more for this, your own good. This is it. <laughs> but but it doesn't work out like that. Try and stop me. I know. I mean, really I don't try blame and stop you, me. This is, you know, oh. Oh. and at the moment, of course, I'm going in now after uh, after the show. Right. There are it's so many puppies and so many older dogs because people can't afford to look after them. And Paul was so good at getting that message across. Well, joining me now is Peter Laurie. Peter is from Battersea Dogs Home and obviously worked with Paul on the TV show there and was looking forward to working with him again. It's a real shock, isn't it? Good morning, Lorraine. Yeah, a desperately sad day for everyone here at Battersea. A desperately sad day, of course, for Paul's family and his many, many friends. And our heart goes out to them as well. But yes, staff arriving for work here at Battersea this morning with, with tears in their eyes. It, it's terribly shocking and, and awful news. Because he did so much work, you know, not just on the TV show, which was an absolute delight to watch, um, but also behind the scenes too. And the thing is, you know, I've said this this morning, but dogs are fantastic judges of character. And he loved dogs, but they absolutely adored him, didn't they, Peter? That, that's so true, Lorraine. And, and Paul, I think, had a, a very rare ability to connect not only with people, of course, but with dogs as well. And he would go into the kennels and meet some of our new arrivals and form a, a wonderful bond. Paul was just such a massive part of the, the Battersea family. 
He was loved, of course, by our dogs, but loved by everybody here. Such a wonderful character, always fun to be around. He brought so much wit and humour uh, to Battersea, but he did so much, as you say, to, to promote our work and promote the importance of our work and the work of our sector colleagues as well. He really helped put animal rescue on the map in this country and raised its profile as, as a cause of, of great significance and a cause that so many people up and down the country and indeed around the world feel very passionately about. No, that's very true. I mean, obviously, the legacies we remember him as an amazing entertainer and a very, very funny man. But the legacy also will be how he has helped. You know, he's helped at Battersea and, and helped generally um, to, to get people to think about, you know, about animals and about rescue and, and also to help. You know, this, that, that's an incredible thing. That's right. I can't think of anyone, actually, who's done more to promote animal rescue as a cause than, than Paul in recent times. We worked with Paul for over a decade, best part of 11 years. And not only did he do a lot of filming with us, of course, and his show was a worldwide success, but he did so much behind the scenes to help, to, to encourage and inspire staff. He helped us raise money. He supported our campaigns. He helped to change the law to create a better mm. future for dogs and cats and other animals in this country as well. So his legacy extends well beyond the TV show uh, to, to animal rescue in its fullest sense. It really does. It really does. And you'll, you'll miss him so, so much. Um, thank you for joining us with, with your thoughts. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And, and Lucy, we just, um, we'll just remember him as, as um, just a really kind, funny, lovely man who, was, who made it look easy, didn't he? He certainly did. He really made it look easy. And it actually isn't easy. Um, and he, you know, he, he left behind lots of animals, lots of his friends. And obviously I saw on Twitter earlier, which I thought was really lovely. Some of his friends passed and he, you know, like Scylla Black and he did a eulogy at her funeral, Barbara Windsor. He's lots of friends um, who are now in the afterlife and perhaps he can go and meet them there and party up there. I would hope so, with lots and lots of dogs, especially his beloved Olga. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Lucy. Thank and you. It's a sad day, but like I say, I keep thinking about him and he just, I just can't help smiling, which is, well, that is the best possible legacy, isn't it?